Like so many women in America for years, I struggled to get pregnant. My husband and I, we tried everything that we could do to start a family of our own, and finally, we were successful. I began to dream about our life and our future together. And then one day, I woke up covered in blood. And it's hard to describe the agony of a miscarriage. It's heartbreak. It's helplessness. It's pain and it's profound sadness. After my second miscarriage, I wondered in my grief again if God had decided I was never meant to be a mother. So when I finally got pregnant again, I was overjoyed. It was as if I believed that God was giving me and my husband, finally, he had a plan for us to be parents. But after four months, while feeling terror and trauma in my heart, I was rushed to the emergency room. There with my doctor and my husband, I learned that I had suffered a fetal demise or a stillbirth. Georgia Representative Lucy McBath there talking about her three miscarriages that she suffered through. And this is at a congressional hearing on women's rights. As you can probably tell, when it comes to access to abortion services here, and it's in the light of what's potentially going to happen with Roe v. Wade upcoming here. Now, she also told people about the use of some abortion medication when it comes to things like miscarriages, because most of the folks in the room that like to talk about what they want to tell women to do with their bodies don't know these things. I'm going to let her continue. My doctor thought it would be better to and safer to end the pregnancy naturally, without the medicines so commonly used. So for two weeks, I carried my dead fetus and waited for me to go into labor. For two weeks, people passed me on the street, telling me how beautiful I looked, asking how far along I was, and saying that they were so excited for me and my future with my child. For two weeks, I carried a lost pregnancy and the torment that comes with it. I never went into labor on my own. When my doctor finally induced me, I faced the pain of labor without hope for a living child. This is my story. It's uniquely my story. And yet it's not so unique. Absolutely not. I know multiple women who've suffered through these types of things, Francesca. And there's more to it that she's talking about here. But first, you guys need to just recap what we've already seen here. She's talking about three miscarriages. Then she's talking about the pain and the time it takes having to go through these things and then trying to get those services done. So maybe you can potentially move on even though the emotional pain and trauma will never fully leave you. And then how these abortion medications that again are looking to be outlawed were part of her process. And when not used, she had to have her stillborn child knowing that there was no hope for it to be alive. But these are the folks that they're calling monsters, baby killers, and don't care about the unborn. Mm-hmm. And currently right now in Alabama, um, there are stories of women who have had miscarriages who are being uh, denied care, immediate care as they are bleeding and in pain and cramping because healthcare providers are not sure whether or not they had an abortion. This (laughs) is where we are headed. Lucy McBath's story is so tragic. For so many reasons, it's tragic to obviously lose, um, you know, a fetus um, in the middle of your of, and especially when you're so excited about it, right? A wanted pregnancy. She's also the mother of Jordan Davis, who was killed by a basically a racist a hole who shot him in cold blood for playing loud music when he was only 17, I believe. So she is America. Her story 
is this country that can't get its act together on gun control and gun violence and can't get its act together when it comes to protecting a woman's right to safe abortion care, to safe reproductive health. And she's telling you right now, and 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 like we should be listening to her every single day because again, the one thing that didn't happen to Lucy McBath is she wasn't handcuffed to her hospital bed for having that miscarriage, mm-hmm. right? She no one looked at her and said, "Well, did you do something to cause this? Was this actually an abortion?" That is where this country is going. That's where a lot of states are already going. Uh, there are other countries that already do this practice in El Salvador, for example. You get 30 years to life for a an alleged abortion. And women are now in jail because they've had miscarriages. That is coming to this country unless we stop it. And the problem with so many people in this country is they'll hear you say something or someone like you say that and go, it's America, it's not gonna happen. How many other times have we said that and we've gotten to a point where we said, is this America? This doesn't look like the country that we always said it was. Well, we're headed there again and people are warning you like Francesca, she's telling you people like Representative McBath are telling you. uh, There's one more piece of it and I don't think we have time to run it, but she basically asked, so which one of my three miscarriages should I have been jailed for? At what point should I have been put in prison for this? Because that's where we're headed. In fact, we're damn near there. It also has a chilling effect on the doctors that would help in these situations, making it again even more dangerous. And so I ask on behalf of these women, After which failed pregnancy should I have been imprisoned? Would it have been after the first miscarriage? After doctors used what would be an illegal drug to abort the lost fetus? Would you have put me in jail after the second miscarriage? Perhaps that would have been the time. Forced to reflect in confinement at the guilt I felt. The guilt that so many women feel after losing their pregnancies. Or would you have put me behind bars after my stillbirth? After I was forced to carry a dead fetus for weeks, after asking God if I was ever going to be able to raise a child. And I asked because the same medicine used to treat my failed pregnancies is the same medicine states like Texas would make illegal. I ask because if Alabama makes abortion murder, does it make miscarriage manslaughter? I ask because I want to know if the next woman who has a miscarriage at three months, if she will be forced to carry her dead fetus to term. So for the women in your life whose stories you do not know, For the women across the country whose lives you may not understand. And for the women in America who have gone through things you simply cannot comprehend. I say to you this, women's rights are human rights. That's where we're headed because there's a bunch of folks who have no idea what they're talking about, have never experienced certain things, but Everyone should be conforming to their way of life, to their experiences, to their thought process that are based in absolute ignorance. 